The term La Raza is literally translated as the race, but it has come to mean our people, that breed of people in the Americas resulting from the mingling of the European white race with the American Indian and his descendants. This term commonly used today in the Spanish-speaking communities connotes unity and identity. It would be key mid-19th century events that produced the first Mexican-Americans, including the U.S.-Mexico War, the Mexican Session, and the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo that extended American citizenship to about 115,000 Mexican citizens living in what is today Southwest America, formerly Northern Mexico. Ever since then, the Mexican-American population has increased and been replenished by continuing immigration from Mexico. For over 150 years, beginning in 1850 after the incorporation of the Southwest and 115,000 Mexicans into the United States, Mexican Americans would have been counted on the U.S. Census and racially classified in a variety of ways. Before looking at how Mexican Americans were racially classified and the reasons for said classification, it is relevant to look at the genetic ancestry of Mexicans as their whiteness has always been questioned primarily due to their ancestry and appearance. Mexicans are commonly believed to be a genetically and phenotypically diverse population as a result of extensive admixture between different populations from multiple geographic locations around the world, namely Spanish, Indigenous, and African ancestry. This extensive admixture, primarily among the Spanish and Indigenous, created a mixed population referred to as Mestizo. By the 1920s, after the Mexican Revolution, an ideology based upon the fusion of European and indigenous peoples and cultures to create a new and improved race and culture would become the national ideology of Mexico, which stood in contrast to US and European ideas of purity and anti-miscegenation. Manuel Gamio and Jose Vasconcelos, among other authors, provided the intellectual support for the Mexican nationalistic post-revolutionary project, a nation-building project based on the concept of a homogenous mestizo nation as the only path to unifying a large and diverse country and managing disparate populations. Therefore, after the Mexican Revolution, all Mexicans were now meant to become mestizo citizens. This ideology, dubbed mestizaje, would essentially equate being Mexican with being Mestizo. In Mexico's 1921 census, the racial breakdown of Mexico was 60% Mestizo, 30% Indigenous, and 10% White. In regards to race or phenotypical differences, it was only in the 1921 census that a separate question on race was ever asked in Mexico's census, and the fact mestizos comprised the majority of the Mexican population served the purposes of the revolutionary government in the 1920s to eradicate socio-racial differences and build a new nation based on a growing mestizo population. In recent times, official surveys have included race questions like Mexico's National Institute of Statistics and Geography 2016 Intergenerational Social Mobility Survey, which found the race of Mexicans to be about 60% mestizo, 15% indigenous, 12% white, and 10% were not sure, with other race and Afro-Mexicans comprising less than 5% of the population. However, one has to wonder about the reliability of measuring race within the Mexican population as race is a social construct and in the case of Mexico, there are numerous factors influencing how the Mexican government and Mexicans classify others and themselves in the present and in the past. Social, political, legal, economic, ancestry, linguistic, culture, and skin tone, just to name a few, are factors that can affect how Mexicans identify and are identified. In recent decades, advances in genetic technology has allowed us to uncover individual, ethnic, and national ancestries of people to understand the complexity of human migration and history. 
Through genetic ancestry studies, one can learn about the population groups Mexicans descend from and how its history of colonization, slavery, miscegenation, immigration, and mestizage has affected the genetic ancestry of Mexicans and Mexican Americans. According to a 2023 genetic study, the Mexican Biobank Project created a nationwide genotype for about 6,000 Mexicans born between 1910 and 1980 from 898 rural and urban localities across all 32 states of Mexico. The study highlights the genetic composition of Mexicans to be primarily made up of ancestries found in Western Europe, Indigenous Americas, and West Africa. To a much lesser extent, Mexicans have ancestry from East Asia and South Asia as well, especially in the Guerrero state of Mexico. The average proportion of European and indigenous ancestry can vary depending on the region in Mexico. The northern states of Mexico have higher European ancestry compared to the central and southern states, which have higher indigenous ancestry. Ancestry from West Africa, East Asia, and South Asia can be observed in every state, although they are relatively small. The proportion of European and indigenous ancestry in Mexican individuals can vary within the same state as well. The admixture analysis shows some Mexicans derive the overwhelming majority of their ancestry from Europe, while other Mexicans derive the overwhelming majority of their ancestry from the indigenous Americas. However, on average, Mexicans derive close to an equal proportion of European and indigenous ancestry. Interestingly, the study shows that rural Mexicans have higher proportions of indigenous ancestry than urban Mexicans, and younger Mexicans have higher proportions of indigenous ancestry than older Mexicans. About 70% of the samples from the Mexican Biobank study were from rural areas in Mexico, and over 50% were part of the younger demographic. Taking the correlation between higher proportions of indigenous ancestry among rural and younger Mexicans and the sample of the Mexican Biobank study being mostly rural and younger Mexicans, this may indicate that the results are skewed towards portraying Mexicans as being more indigenous than they actually are. However, a 2020 genetic study which sampled about 15,000 Mexicans from all the states of the country also revealed similar patterns in regards to Mexicans deriving close to an equal proportion of European and indigenous ancestry, and the northern regions having higher proportions of European ancestry, and the southern regions having higher proportions of indigenous ancestry. The main difference with this study and the Mexican Biobank is that multiple regions are shown to be more elevated in European and African ancestry than the Mexican Biobank study. Other genetic ancestry studies on Mexicans have also noted the correlation between higher socioeconomic status and a higher proportion of European ancestry. This coincides with numerous other studies that document the historical and current association of darker skin and racialized physical features with lower socioeconomic status in Mexico. Essentially, those with lighter skin and European physical features have greater accumulated privilege and social benefits than those with skin tones and physical features linked to indigenous and or black ancestry. Furthermore, similar to the Mexican biobank study cited before, rural Mexicans tend to be darker skinned than urban Mexicans, and Mexicans from the southern region are more likely to be classified in the darker skinned color categories compared with those in the northern region while residents in the central regions occupy an intermediate position. However, similar to the Mexican Biobank study, 
Skin tone as shown to vary even within the same region with medium to light brown being the most common skin tone throughout Mexico and in every region. Although I am speaking about the correlations between genetic ancestry and skin tone, this should not be taken to mean that lighter skin tones always correlate with a higher proportion of European ancestry, as people within the same family can vary in skin tone. Interestingly, one can see the privileges and social benefits associated with lighter skin and European features within Mexican families as well. For example, Clara E. Rodriguez, in her book, Changing Race, Latinos, the Census, and the History of Ethnicity, includes a case study interview with a Mexican-American woman named Victoria. Victoria described her family as having a variation of skin tones, with her being the darkest one in the family. Victoria details how being the darkest skinned child in the family meant she grew up being tasked with harder less desirable household chores, while her light-skinned, green-eyed sister was the favored and privileged child. Mexican Americans have also been shown on average to derive close to an equal portion of European and indigenous ancestry. Although this can vary among individuals, as some Mexican Americans derive the overwhelming majority of the ancestry from Europe, while others can derive the overwhelming majority of the ancestry from the indigenous Americas. Furthermore, admixture estimates can vary depending on the samples, region, and study. For example, a study on Mexican Americans from Northern and Central California found Mexican Americans to be about 45% European, 52% Native American, and 3% African. However, similar to Mexicans in Mexico, the proportion of European and indigenous ancestry in Mexican Americans was shown to vary among individuals. Interestingly, the U.S. born Mexican Americans were shown to have higher European admixture than the Mexican-born Mexican-Americans. A study on Mexican-Americans from Star County, Texas shown Mexican-Americans to be about 57% European, 39% Native American, and 4% African ancestry on average. This shows that the proportion of European and indigenous ancestry in Mexican-Americans can differ depending on the U.S. state and region they are from as well as between U.S.-born and foreign-born Mexican-Americans. However, a study that analyzed the genetic admixture of Mexican-Americans from San Antonio, Texas by looking at Mexican-American participants from two other San Antonio-based studies called the SAFDS and SABOR found the average genetic admixture among Mexican-Americans to be different even within the same city. Participants from the SAFDS study were shown to be on average 50% European, 47% Native American, and 3% African. Participants from the SABOR study were shown to be on average 59% European, 38% Native American, and 3% African. The study notes factors like geographical and regional origin of the Mexican Americans sampled, the sample size, whether participants are foreign born or US born, and participants' socioeconomic status, just to name a few, to explain why Mexican American participants from two San Antonio based studies can differ in average genetic ancestry proportions while being from the same city. In addition, individual Mexican-American participants within the SAFDS and SABOR studies were shown to vary significantly in the proportion of European and indigenous ancestry, with some being upwards of 90% European or 90% Native American. Interestingly, Mexican-Americans like Mexicans from Mexico have also been shown to display skin color stratification. Numerous studies have found that lighter-skinned, European-looking Mexican-Americans have a higher socioeconomic status and attain higher education rates than darker-skinned, Indian-looking Mexican-Americans.
Overall, what genetic studies on Mexicans and Mexican-Americans show is that those of Mexican descent have varying mixtures of European, indigenous, and African ancestry. Some Mexicans can be predominantly European, others can be predominantly indigenous, but on average, Mexicans derive close to an equal portion of European and indigenous ancestry. However, what genetic studies on Mexicans also reveal is that the admixture results of Mexicans in certain studies can vary depending on the characteristics of the Mexicans included in the study. As we have seen, characteristics including age, socioeconomic status, and geographic region, just to name a few, have been found to correlate with increased or decreased proportions of European and indigenous ancestry. This means that when looking at Mexican genetic studies, one has to question which Mexicans are being included in these studies and which are being excluded, as this can significantly affect the results of the study, giving you an inaccurate picture of the genetic ancestry of Mexicans. As Mexicans have been shown to be a heavily admixed group of people, attempting to classify Mexicans within U.S racial classifications, which has historically been marked by a binary black-white color line, hypodescent, and repudiation of racial hybridity has been one of the main causes for ambiguity and uncertainty surrounding the racial status of Mexicans in the United States. Mexicans and other Latinos have confounded and continue to confound the bipolar structure that evolved in the United States. Due to the varying phenotypes, mixture, and perspectives on race, they do not fit easily into the bipolar structure of the United States. And in future videos, I'll be discussing how Mexican Americans have navigated the color line with particular focus on the U.S. Census. Well, that's the end of this video. If you liked the video, make sure to subscribe and thanks for watching.